Hello, in this class of GSM, the topic to be covered are BSC functions and trough functions. In previous GSM fundamental class, we have studied about BTS functions. So now in this class, we will study BSC and trough functionalities. So, this is mobile station. With the help of air interface, this mobile station is attached to BSC. Now, BTS, sorry. This BTS is attached to BSC with the help of a BIS interface and BSC is further attached to MSC. So, this one is a interface. But between BSC and MSC, we have a functional entity which is trough. Now, this trough is transcoder, rate, adaption, unit. So, we will study its functionality and where is the position of the trough in our class today. So, let's, before moving to trial, let's study first the functionality of BSCs. Like, what are the functions of BSC? The very first function of BSC is radio resource radio resource management management of cells under its control. That means it, it is a manager of all the BTS or all the cells under its control. It has to control the radio resource. As BSC is a central controller, that means base station controller, it is controlling all the BTS, that means all the cell under its. That's why the very first, first function is radio resource management. Next we have Next function is assignment and release of frequencies. To assign frequency and to release frequencies to a cell, this is also a function of BSC. Then we have supervision of intercell handover that means whenever we are moving from one cell to another so this is known as that means movement of one cell to another cell this is interest intercell handover and this supervision that means handover control is there with bsc part next we have SS7 signaling for MSC. This SS7 is signaling system number 7 which is a signaling process as and it is used by MSC for all control signal and it is controlled by BSC. After that we have X.25 which is a protocol connection and this connection, X.25 connection with OMCR. This connection is also managed by BSC. Other than this, the function of BSC is traffic handling. That means to route traffic from one BSC to different different MSCs is also managed by basically a manager who is controlling the traffic and now BSC in its base part is a manager to control all these traffic. Now uh, last function is PCM switching. A PCM switching that means the functionalities are divided and each and every functions are performing their own task. Now, oh, what are the units? That means like we have divided the units of BTS. So, like this, BSC, that means 
how in how many units my bsc or my base station controller system is divided so it is divided into three that means the very first is processing unit the very first unit is processing unit then we have switching matrix this being the second is switching matrix and then we have trunk, uh, trunk controller unit so this is divided into three category in trunk controller unit we have pcm switching and x.25 switching so these are the various that means parts of bsc and each and every part is performing their own task now with the help of processing unit and x.25 trunk controller unit with the help of processing unit and controller unit or i can say x.25 controller unit both of these units in bsc downloads new software releases for bsc so these units will download new software releases for bsc as bscs are upgrading they are changing the software configurations so these are two units which are automatically downloading the new units or the new softwares so that bsc can operate so if i draw a bsc this one as bsc now it is attached like here i have bts so this interface is a base interface now uh, this bsc is attached to msc and now this interface is a interface now we are we will perform that what are the functionalities in this so we have first as processing unit i require a processing unit with x.25 controller as this x.25 controller is with omcr operation and maintenance center for radio with this processing unit i have a switching matrix and this switching matrix under this switching matrix i have pcm controller PCM controller is basically an entity who is controlling the traffic that means division of slots and forwarding to msc switching matrix because all of these units are connected so this is a basically a block diagram of bsc that each and every bsc operator operator is using the bsc shall be divided into the three basic units for its functionality that we have discussed now so we have completed here bsc functions so let's move to next that means trough functionalities so we have trow we also name it as trc now what is trow this is transcoder read adaption unit or normally transcoder basically this trow unit or transcoder is a function or it is a part of bss 
So what is its function or what is trough? It is basically a device. So I will write down that this is a device that converts 13 kbps and this 13 kbps is normal speed of speech 13 kbps to 64 kbps which is a standard. So why I require to co uh, convert my 13 kbps to so 60 uh, 64 kbps because it this 64 is standard as per the laws and my msc is working on 64 kbps msc is connected to pstn this pstn is also working on 64 kbps so that means if i'm sending 13 kbps there is no compatibility so i require to convert this 13 kbps to 64 kbps so in order to convert that means 13 kbps speed signal to 64 so i require a unit and that unit is known as transporter and or transporter rate adaption unit so this becomes the function uh, where it is split is it is a part of bss that means with bsc so it is placed and it converts from 13 to 64. This is basically the function. Now uh, we have laws. That means we have T1 mu law. And next one as E1 A law. Now what is this E1? E1 is also basically a standard PCM time slot division standard. So this E1, T1 is American and this is European. So, so commonly as E1 or T1, so we are following here E1 standard. In T1, whenever we are using T1 standard, we have 92 traffic channels. We have 92 traffic channels plus control channels whereas E1 is offering 120 traffic or con and control channels so these are the total uh, channels available in different standards like uh, E1 or T1 standards basically we require PCM switching, PCM control. This T1 has 24 time slots and this E1 has 32 time slots. So like for this as it has more time slots, so more number of traffic and control, less and less number. Of. As per the user requirement, as per the traffic, we require our demand is E1. That's why we are using this standard. Now this transcoder rate adaption unit is also divided into parts that how it converts 13 uh, kbps to 64 kbps so it is also divided into parts like first is trough controller. The first unit is trough controller then we have signal processing unit. And the last one is PCM controller. So between the three basic units, my trough is divided. So let's make a diagram for this. So this
at one end it is connected to BSC and at another end it is connected to MSC. So it is dividing into number of slots. So I am writing here that this interface is a interface. Whereas this interface is at an interface which is a new interface for specifically for B, BSC and TRA. But we commonly take BSC and MSC interface as a interface. Now how it is divided. So we have transcoder unit. The very first unit is transcoder controller. The first one. Then we have signal processing unit. And then we have PCM controller. So this is basically the trial functionalities that if I am using E1, that means uh, E1 here. So PCM, that means at this end I have 122 channels, whether of data or of signaling, that means control channels, I have these number of. So if I name user data channel, I have from 0 to 31, that means total 32 channels in E1, only traffic channels. So these are the total channels carrying by one E1. So we can multiplex E1 if my capacity is more. So that means Atter is the unit who is changing my 13 kbps to 64 kbps. So in order to make 13 compatible to 64, we require to add some bits. And that bits are my redundant bits which I require to add on, to increase it or to make it compatible. So, we, uh, we are, I have written there A and mu law. So, what is this A and mu law? That mu T1 and A E1. So, these are basically the audio level compression laws. To compress my audio levels, I have these laws. We are following, that means, uh, signaling system like E1A law, which is used for audio level compression like we people are following. It, in this law, we have 16 time slots specifically out of 32, 16 number time slot is used for signaling. A E1, like this is one E1, so it has slots, total number of from 0 to 31. Out of all these, this 16 one is used for signaling purpose. This is as per the law, so I have written only 16 because there is a specifically reserve that all of those who are using E1 will, be, will reserve 16 for their time slot for their signaling purpose. Now signaling is also divided as CS and CCS signaling. We will are using CCS signaling. Now what is this signaling? We will study in our continuing class. That means how signal will go. What is channel associated signaling? This one and this one is a common channel signaling. And this E1 A law is based on common channel signaling which we people are studying. So, this is all for today's class of GSM. We will continue with next topic in our next class. Thank you so much.